During the past month, we all took part in the emotional story of baby Richard as the four-year-old boy who was taken from his adoptive parents, the only mom and dad he ever knew, and returned to his biological parents. Uh, now, that story reminded us of a similar one, the DeBoer family's ordeal of several years ago. They, too, were forced to give up their adoptive daughter, Jessica. The picture of the family handing over the child was unforgettable. Robbie DeBoer worked through her pain by writing Losing Jessica, published a year ago, and she joins us here tonight. I want to talk to you about your life since Jessica and the new love, Casey, that's come into your life that brings a smile to your face, your boy. But I've been listening to my friend Ray Bream talk about this baby Richard case on radio here in Los Angeles. And I want you to speak to the point of the courts in America. And while they've quibbled greatly over the rights of adoptive versus biological parents, they seem to have forgotten the rights and the best interests of the children involved in these cases. And, and I think that is a, uh, it's, it's a tragedy. And I, I think it's malfeasance uh, of, the of the judiciary system because true adoptive parents and biological parents have rights. But what about these kids, though? What about Jessica? What about Casey? What about Richard? Well, their, their rights aren't even recognized. Um, so there has to be some point of law that we come out and say children do have rights, um, either through a uh, U.S. Supreme Court decision or through some um, judicial state of each state going through that process. Um, what's really important is that those are, there's the two disputing parties, but there's also this third party that should have every right such as the other two parties do. Right. And we've got to start looking at it because these children, are, they're being sacrificed. Well, I don't want to bring up old memories for you here, mm -hmm. but, but can we be sure <clears throat> that Jessica is as happy now as she was when she was your daughter? Um, it's a different kind of happiness, probably. Children grieve just as adults do. However, they only grieve for a short period of time, and then it goes into the back of their memory. And sometime in their future, something will open that window, whether they're 20, 30, any type of relationship, and it could explode. Um, they will never trust like they did when they were younger. They will never have the bonding relationships that they had when they were younger. Mm -hmm. So. Now, it, I know that you, you and your husband have not tried to contact Jessica, that you feel she ought to be left at peace, and, and mm -hmm. that's commendable. But it's possible that at some point in time, when she becomes a woman, uh, she may come looking for you. She may come to your door. Yeah. Um, you smile at that. Well, we, we, we write her. We send her presents. Um, we send uh, Dan and Kara Schmidt um, letters to try to let Jessie know that we haven't abandoned her and we are there. We are hoping that one day they put this fight behind them and they give those letters to Jessie. Um, and the presence, because she needs to know that people out there, not just Dan and Kara, still love her, and that um, we didn't do this to hurt her, that it was a, the courts of law that actually caused this problem. Yeah, they, so. it wasn't you that put her uh, right. uh, you know, out of your home. It wasn't necessarily the Schmitz, and it wasn't the DeBoers. The laws have to be changed. And what about your feelings toward the Schmitz? I, I know at the time there was some hard feeling, and I mm -hmm. want, from, from your demeanor, I I get that that's maybe... Well, I think in any kind of legal action, such as what we went through in two different states, that you always have this kind of friction, and that friction will remain, basically because we no longer have Jesse. Mm -hmm. um, but did we understand, do we understand now a little bit more um, their feelings and emotions? I think we're a little more clear on that. Um, but the fact still remains. This isn't about them. They should let Jessie have that part of her life that she started off with. Um, and well, in the same case thing goes with baby Richard. Baby Richard. I mean, yeah, he's leaving the only mom and dad and family situation that he's, he's ever known. And this is going to produce great confusion in him for a time. Well, he also has a brother, which was different yeah. than our situation. He has a seven-year-old seven brother. And both of those children are suffering tremendously not to mention the families. And somehow, it has to come to a point where family reunification doesn't destroy another family, which is basically what's happening mm -hmm. now. Um, the Doe's were definitely a family. Um, maybe not biologically, but they were a family. And baby Richard had no knowledge of the fact that they weren't blood related. Are so. you, have you contacted baby Richard's mom at all? And 
tried to share the experience with her yeah, and, and, and how she doing through I this. I spent some, uh, some time with her, just came from her home about a week ago. They're a very strong family. Yep, yeah, but They're, it's tough. It's, it's very tough. It's very tough. Um, and to see their seven-year-old son, I just... I feel that pain all over again, sure and I just do. wish that this would come to an end. I wish that there was other things that we could do to prevent this from happening to children. Now, how do you change, I, I mean, I know how you change a law. You know, mm -hmm. you, you appeal for legislation, you right. lobby for legislation. In some states, you can put a measure on the ballot to change the laws. How do you change the way a court considers these cases? Is there a law that can be introduced here, or, or I think are we going to have to do some overhauling do of the legal system? We have to do an overhauling of the legal system. Um, we have these archaic laws, and we might even have new laws in place, like in Chicago. There was a new law in place where the judges in the Supreme Court chose not to acknowledge the new law, saying that Baby Richard should have had a best interest hearing. Now, Jesse had a best interest hearing, and it was decided that she should not be removed. But since it was between states, there was an argument there. In Illinois, they had a law saying that Richard should have had a best interest hearing, and they were not allowed to have that best interest hearing because the U.S. from the uh, Supreme Court judges decided not to have it. So we need to re-educate and change the way that these judges are thinking. Yeah, and we also need to, you know, um, a friend of mine said, you know, whenever, whenever, for example, one of these monsters who attacks kids, uh, they, you know, they, they say, why was he put on the street? We ought to find the person in the judicial system, whether it be a probation officer or a judge, who returned an aberrant to society and put them on television and say, okay, are you happy with what you did? We ought to get these people who made this decision on Baby Richard on television programs and say, okay, how do you like what's going on? How do you like the result of what you're doing here? I don't think they could face it. I mean, what they're having to face now with the public knowing this information, they're devastated by it. They, they don't want to be out there in the public. The Supreme Court judges aren't supposed to be affected by this type of um, this type of process of the letting the public know that this is happening. Um, they've hidden behind their cloaks for so long, and now the time has come that they can't hide yeah, behind well, And by the way, speaking of people, uh, you don't see a lot of Dow Corning guys on TV all day. I haven't seen too many of those on today. Back with uh, more of you on the toll-free exchange for Robbie DeBear uh, at 800-952-2788 after these messages.